So Perculia, thanks for joining us today. I uh, really appreciate your time. And is it Perk? Do you like to go by Perk? Yeah, I like going by Perk. Yeah, everyone at work calls me that. I just want to dig in a little bit of your history. So my understanding is you've been playing games your entire life. Is that a pretty accurate statement? I'd say yes, but also there's been a twist because I didn't really... I wasn't playing video games all the time. I was playing things like yeah. on floppy disks, and my parents were really big into like art and culture. Yeah. And I didn't really have my own computer until I really wanted one, so I went on, I won a game show, We're in Time is Karma in San Diego, and then that's when I would like secretly play computer games. So, <laughs> so this cool. is the actual like real game show like, you yeah. grew up watching, Where in the World is Karma? It was, it was a sequel, so it was We're in Time. So you had, oh, wow. is the final stage, you had to like answer six questions, you had to run through these arches, and you had to sprint to do it in, in 90 seconds or else you'd lose, it was really intense. Do you have a copy of the rerun? On VHS, my parents do. On VHS? Do. That's yes. awesome. You should encode that. <laughs> yeah. I really that. wanted to win the Gateway uh, computer because it had computer uh, awesome. games on it. And then I would like secretly play, play them. Where did, they, where did they film that? Was it in New York? Yeah, that was in New York. Nice. It was, uh, then it was broadcast on PBS Channel 13. And they gave you they gave you like costumes to wear. You had like the space jackets, and you had to film the first two rounds in one day, and then come back another day to film the last round. And the equipment actually malfunctioned on me, oh, so yeah. I had to go back and film it again. And I remember I failed the first question, and then it malfunctioned, so I had to go back and fail the first question That's again. Awesome. But I was like sprinting, I'm like yeah, I'm gonna say the wrong things in a few seconds. <laughs> yeah. So what was the question? I don't even remember, but it's, I remember it was the first one and you had, when it broke, you had to do something special to uh, yeah, unlock the gate or, yeah. and I wasn't very athletic. So I was like, oh God, like, why am I taking from? They're like, oh no, the, the, the gate just broke on you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it was very stressful. <laughs> so how did you, did you have to audition to get on the show or did just they let anyone on? I was or? really into geography growing up. Like mm -hmm. I was state finalist for the uh, geography B mm -hmm. uh, several times and just they were going around to middle schools looking for people that I guess tested well on yeah. a camera, but also uh, answered a certain number of test questions correctly. Yeah. And then I moved through several rounds of that, and uh, then they chose me. So. so talk to me about these floppy disks. All right. So what were some of the games? All right. So it was so my parents. Uh, my mom's a fourth grade teacher, mm -hmm. and we would have these ancient computers that she would take home, and there would all there'd always be these like educational games mm -hmm. on the computer, and I just only had that, and I thought they were really fun to play. So you know you had like super ancient pixelated Oregon Trail. Mm -hmm. You had really kind of creepily violent games in retrospect like Odell Lake where it's like, <laughs> oh, you're living in the ocean and then this seagull's going to eat you or this other fish is going to eat you. Yes. And I would just like play that too. <laughs> Survivor, like, you know, lemonade stand. Oh, you charged too much for lemonade. Now your stand's gone bankrupt. Like looking back, they were really it's like savage. Teaching games life and, lessons. Yeah, <laughs> teaching you really good life lessons about like profit and revenue and your PL. So I would just, you know, play these games in the basement whenever the computer was ancient would come home and I would play these super, uh, you know, yeah. ancient uh, computers for fun. And then I upgraded to my Carmen San Diego uh, computer. So the Carmen San Diego computer was that middle school, high school? Yeah, that was sixth grade. Okay, wow. So nice. that was it was a Gateway Two Thousand. Yeah. Right. And I thought I thought that was the shit. I was like, oh yeah, I got yeah. my computer, and it came with Mist and like oh, yeah. Spin Doctor Challenger, and of course like Carmen San Diego Geography games. So. Talk to me about Mist. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, that I really loved playing. That I would just get lost in it, and I it was I was sort of getting into the internet, and I wasn't very good at solving puzzles, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to look at the cheats, and I was really bad at solving the puzzles. So I would just get lost and like read all the books and memorize the location of all the trees and all these details that didn't help me solve anything. But I just really liked. I, it was so immersive. It was so much fun. Like, like you it. know, just playing the game, not how it was meant to be played. Nice. And yeah, I, I had such a blast with that. You ended up beating it? Yeah, finally. Eventually. And I used the internet. You did use yes. the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't solve everything. Yeah, but I, I, I just really enjoyed that kind of, you yeah. know, exploration vibe. And I think that's why I also, yeah. you know, really, it reminded me sort of like Teldrassil in oh, WoW, yeah. which is why I rolled a Night Elf. I could so. see that. I could see that. Yeah. So that, the pine that trees so the Night Elf is what you ended up with? Yeah, Night Elf okay. Rogue. So, middle school, Miss, any other game influences? Um, I'd say mainly that, and yeah. I guess because I was doing so much uh, geography in middle school, mm -hmm. like I was, I think I was a finalist seventh and eighth grade. Oh. I think I was third one year. Wow. Um, I played a lot. There was a lot of educational games with that, like 
uh, zip zap map. Oh wow! And all wow. these things that would quiz you on geography. Yeah. So I got really bored of flashcards, but I would use these educational games、mm. to learn about,、um, you know. Yeah, like re- re- reminding me where all the capitals went and、yeah. all the mountain ranges and all these obscure facts. So high school games, what did you get into? Ah,、uh, high school games. I was, I became like kind of like a very hardcore like theater piano person in high、uh, school. So、yeah. I kind of took a step、uh, back、okay. from games there. But、mm-hmm. yeah, like you, you're. As you can see behind the camera, there's a there's a piano and、yes. there's a Brahms there. So I was really into classical piano. You still、I'd, play? Yeah, I did the Tanglewood program、uh, for several years、uh, in high school.、Um, I was yeah, I was super, super into, into that. Yeah. Yes,、yeah, so, I mean yeah, you know, like you you're doing something four hours a day.、Yeah. You kind of don't really have as much time for games yeah, after school. Yeah, took a break from games.、So. Yeah. I so mean, yeah. So you got into Harvard, right? Yeah. So combination of being amazing at geography and good at the piano was that? Yeah, was that I was a music、of? and art history major、yeah. at Harvard. Yeah.、Uh, which explains a lot of this art、uh, yeah, you behind you. Yeah. <laughs> and、awesome. yeah, I really like sort of the mix of how art and music influenced each other in、mm-hmm. the 19th century. So I kind of specialized in that. I taught some music theory. Uh, for community、uh, classes that Harvard put together,、mm. uh, I ran events at the Harvard Art Museum that they had, which I think kind of tied into why I started at Wowhead because、yeah. the museum was I think the fifth largest collection in the U.S., but they have like no display space.、Mm. They have like one percent of things on display, so they had a very robust set of archives. And、wow. I started off working at the archive area, and then. It was always like you know how do you put stuff in a database? How do you rotate stuff on display? How do you get people to appreciate the、yeah. collection? So I would do archive and database work、uh, and events at the museum, and then also do、uh, I did the radio station for a few years there.、Nice. I taught, taught music theory and kind of had this you know cool art thing going in college. So you did your undergrad and your master's there. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think you would do with that? So when I finished undergrad, I thought that I would get a master's and then maybe I move into doing more events or cre- or curation at a museum. But just the way the economy was and how you know trends were changing, there just wasn't as much of an interest for that. And I was also kind of feeling this itch that it was fun, but I, I was reaching a very like specific targeted amount of people. I wasn't reaching widespread people, and I wanted to share. I liked art, but I wanted to share it with more people. Right. Like that's why I started doing events. But I felt that. If you're doing something for academics, you only reach a very tiny readership, and there's、yeah. so much work that goes into it. Mostly academics. So, so that's、yeah. why I, you know, was really drawn to also sharing. Well, that I started playing in college, and I wanted、yeah. to, you know, start writing like guides, you know, sharing all these cool. Yeah. You know, like you know, wow's culture with people, and like all these cool little quests I found, and I would sort of do that as a counterpart、mm-hmm. to you know have more balance in my life as I was finishing up the master's degree. So, talk to me about getting into wow in college. How did that happen? So, my、uh, college roommate、uh, started playing wow, and we'd always like to go out and you know do things really into you know like desserts and doing cultural things, and she started. Uh, not being around for that, and I was like, "Well, wh- what are you doing?" And she's like, "I have to finish this run," and I'm like, "But I want to go out." And I'm like, "What? What is the thing? Like, you're like, what is it? Still laying her Friday night, <laughs> you know?、Uh, fun times." And she started explaining it to me, and then I was sort of like backseat telling her how to play because I got hooked.、Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, "Oh, you need to do this instead." Like, so we were just we're sort of spending our evenings、um, yeah. watching her play WoW. And then for Christmas in、um, Vanilla, I think this was and if. 2005.、Mm-hmm. She gave me.、Um, she gave me a copy of it. Nice. And then she.、Uh, I think as at the time you got a special like referral thing if you gifted it to a friend. So she、like、did that from. Rocket or something. Yeah. yeah. So she g- gifted it to me, and then I started playing, and I didn't know what class to play. And she was a mage, and I thought that the mages had really cool outfits. So I was like, okay, well. I want to be a mage, but not exactly like a mage because you need to keep your own, you know, outfits and clothes.、Mm-hmm. Like I, I didn't know terminology at the、sure. time, and she was like, "Oh, well, you know, why don't you be a rogue? Because they're very agile,、um, like mages." And then I thought, okay, well, I like the night elf because they're, you know, super pale. I liked, you know, how they were close to nature, but you know, kind of goth looking. So I rolled this night elf, and I had no idea. <laughs> With the armor types, I was like, "Oh, like, why am I wearing this leather stuff?" You said it was like a mage. Like, why can't I wear this cloth dress? <laughs> but yeah, so she, but she was like, "Oh, you know, rogues do as much damage as mages, so you know, we can do damage together."、So、she was a min maxer. Yeah. yeah. So. So, so how did you get paired up with her as a roommate? Was that just random? 
Uh, we were hanging out at Harvard, and we were both auditioning for different groups, and we were out there in the hallway, and we were trying to sort of out-snob each other, <laughs> and then we just realized, like, whatever, let's just go get, get, you know, cheesecake, and then we became good friends, and then we just decided to, um, you know, uh, stick together in the housing lottery, and, uh, yeah. got a pretty cool place, actually, nice. for our undergrad, so. So you were both into music? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. so did it affect your ability to perform at college? Did you get too much into the game where it started? No, like not really. Anything? I was, um, like I said before, it was sort of like a fun balance yeah. where uh, I would do a lot of art and music things mm -hmm. and it felt rewarding, but I was reaching a relatively small group of people. And then with WoW, I felt like I had this other cool hobby that I really liked sharing with people. Mm -hmm. And whenever I told people about it, there was this really wide, enthusiastic nice. um, audience. So uh, did you ever raid? Did I, uh, did did I start rating? Yeah, okay. so um, my roommate was, you know, uh, already 60 when mm -hmm. I started playing, and I was really trying hard to catch up, and then I started raiding uh, towards the end of Vanilla. I really tried hard to get uh, nature resist gear mm -hmm. so I could be like a soaker for AQ. Yeah, yeah. Um, the very first raid I did uh, was uh, Zulgurb, and I won the mount, oh, wow. the tiger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that really made me care about rating and min-maxing because I was thinking, oh god, I'm one of the few people on the server with this. I don't want people to think I'm undeserving. So I got really into, <laughs> you know, like reading about rogue clown suits, um, like Elitist Jerk, Shadow Panther, that sort of thing. And because I wasn't playing WoW at the start, my gear was behind other people, so I would look in like all the really ugly things that nobody wanted that were actually mm. really good for DPS. <laughs> so I would be taken along on things, even though you know I didn't have any DKP for you know like full tier one or tier two, because yeah. you know that actually wasn't great for rogues. So I had this really strange clown suit that I would take around and my nature resistance gear to try to get into uh, better and better raids. Like I love the age core leather gloves. I just you know mm. kept those um, forever. <laughs> So going back to something you said earlier with Mist, you yeah. uh, ended up using the internet and you found some resources yeah. that helped you figure out what to do in the game. Yeah. Um, when you got into WoW, it sounds like you also did a little bit of that. You started researching some of the gear and the way that it looked maybe before you uh, went out and went after it. Yeah. Um, what were some of the resources that you used back then to make that? Uh, so in Classic, I mean, Wowhead wasn't really around back right. then, but I would use ThoughtBot to figure out how to get things if I was stuck on a quest. Um, I was using the theory crafting resources a lot. Um, Rogue always had really good spreadsheets uh, of gear you could use like Shadow Panther or Elitist Jerk discussions mm -hmm. so I would use places like that to uh, you know create my you know best uh, clown suits nice. uh, stuff like that and then yeah there's also social networks as well like uh, Twitter wasn't really around in classic but then like moving into Burning Crusade I was on live journal mm -hmm. there was a big uh, community wow ladies uh, where people would like discuss stuff so I would sort of post like my exploits they're like hey guys I'm you know grinding this mount out today or in wrath oh look I'm gonna work on insane here's my weekly progress on that so how long did it take you to get insane and that's the achievement where you get exalted with a bunch of yeah right? I was one of the first people on the server um, when achievements came out, I was super into achievements. I think I was top 100 at a few points. I, uh, you know, made sure to get all the Realm First titles with my guild, uh, Realm First Battlemaster, Cataclysm was first rogue to 85, stuff like that. So I was always like trying to find, every few months I would set like goals for myself and I would try oh, to nice. reach them and I would post fun little updates each day about, uh, you know, how I was pro progressing on them. Are you still doing achievements today? Not as much. It's sort of difficult to get the same balance with Wowhead, but I think right. that same spark of wanting to be first or do something in a creative way has sort of mutated into wanting to do really good PTR coverage. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm the first to figure out where this mount is from or like, right. oh, I'm the first to like take these 10 unrelated spells and solve this puzzle and decide, you know, what's happened to Sylvanas. So there's still this sense of discovery. It's just a bit yeah. different. So one of the cool things about ThoughtBot back in the day was that um, if you were the first person to discover a particular item and your mod installation uploaded that yeah. data, it would actually credit you with that kind of upload. Um, do you, does WoW do anything like that today with some of the data collection that you guys have? Do you uh, not exactly, yeah. because a lot of the data, it's more sophisticated. We can yeah. get that just by 
um, the staff running right. the client and looking for things that people haven't actually seen yet. Right. But we do have user achievements where if you upload enough data, you'll mm-hmm. get an achievement as, you know, thank you recognition gotcha. for uh, still contributing. So then at what point did you start contributing content to the community? Was that, did you start by contributing to Wowhead or had you maybe done some stuff on some of the other groups that you were a part of? Uh, well, you know, it was more casual, like on Twitter or Wow Ladies, I would just post updates, but it wasn't a super focused uh, guide. It was more just like, here's a funny thing that happened. I was killing this mob and I died. Oh, look, my progress is 20%. Mm -hmm. You know, like little sort of like blog MySpace-ish type Mm -hmm. updates. Um, But um, it it caught some people's attention. And then one of my friends at the time, also from the community, uh, was working on Wowhead and said that, you know, a spot had opened up and they wanted to do more guides. Wowhead, you know, was originally a database, but they wanted to expand to do news and guides. And they thought I would be a good fit to, you know, do stuff like that. And I said, yeah, sure, why not? You know, I like writing and I'm knee deep in my, you know, art, art thesis at the time. Let me uh, do some writing for fun. So on so, top of writing a thesis, yeah. you also started writing for Wow. Yeah. <laughs> seems like a lot. I know thesis can be all, all consuming. Yeah, but I just, it felt, I, it, it gave me more clarity actually. Sure. Like it felt good writing for an audience that was really widespread and receptive. You know, I'd write something for a thesis and it'd be like, okay, how many people yeah. will read this? And then I would write something for Wowhead, and I'd be like, oh my god, thank you for letting me know, like, where I get this, you know, weird quest item, or this mount I forgot about, or cool gear for my bank vault, stuff like that. So was your thesis focused on that 19th century topic? It was actually a change of pace, um, because I did so much with that, my advisor suggested I do something with contemporary art, Mm -hmm. so I did some things with the Contemporary Art Institute in Boston, and then Mm -hmm. some museums in the Bronx and Connecticut, um, with this educational background, how to make art accessible to high school students. Nice, nice. So you started contributing you really liked the feeling of people appreciating what you were contributing right what were some of the first articles that you contributed it was an article on fashion how to have a fashionable bank alt Mm. and it was going over a lot of common quality gear which was important at the time because with the cataclysm revamp a lot of a lot of old quirky gear was removed like even the shirts uh they all got changed in cataclysm so the starter shirts uh you couldn't get some of the robes that would drop in like tears fall glades they were removed from the game so there was a lot of stuff that people didn't know about that was removed but then some other cool stuff was added like the embroidered um black i think it was ember silk robe that was a cool item that was added so that was one thing Another thing I worked on was one of the original April Fool's pranks for Wowhead. Mm. We were trying to highlight that there were armor dies you could get in game like Diablo and it was a tie-in with the guild and the NPC that was selling the die was uh, like a twist on uh, Felicia Day and we did a lot of Photoshop and I was using my characters dressed up to replicate this and it it fooled a lot of people at the time so that was a fun one and uh, I think I started around ZG so uh, when ZG and ZA came back, so I did a lot of like gearing up and explaining all the new gear that you could get. Um, but yeah, a lot of my early articles were just trying to make sense of things that had gone away mm-hmm. uh, in Cataclysm because it was so fresh right. and explaining how there were still cool things you could um, you know, do, like explaining all the changes to people because it was really overwhelming and almost kind of sad when you think about it because everyone was so used to playing WoW a certain way and they're like, oh my god, my favorite zone is changed. Like, how does this feel like home? So I would try to write things in the articles showing that, you know, there's still a cool quest to do. There's still like a fun Easter egg here. You can do stuff like that. So you contributed a few articles initially. Um, they were well received, it sounds like. Yeah. And at what point did you just kind of get out of maybe writing content, start taking on more of a more of a responsibilities? So one of the first things I did outside of articles was when Transmog was introduced, uh, leading up to 4.3. Wow had had this unique model view where you could dress up a character and, you know, make a full set but with transmog people wanted like what are all the items that match together so the developers made a project where you could actually create these sets and people could then browse by you know all the names of the sets and it wasn't just tier armor it was things like oh remember this green boe set that dropped for from level 40 mobs and you know like badlands so i was assigned to put all the obscure sets together mm. And I had a blast with that, and I sort of like started taking more of the project because I was so like detail obsessed and I love fashion. 
And then I started doing more with the devs after that project in 4.3, asking them for follow-ups. Uh, at that point, we were doing more with news and guides, so I started taking over uh, news and guides. And then I even went to BlizzCon at the very, very last minute. Uh, I don't even think I was... They had like a special fan site event after, and I was super late. I, I couldn't even get into the fan site nice. event. Um, and they had announced Mist of Pandaria, and it was like, oh my god, the like, talent's being redone. Like, okay, spend the entire night, you know, transcribing every single talent so we can make a mock talent calculator. Yeah. And it suddenly got very intense very quickly. So I started taking on uh, more responsibilities, especially as the company that owned Wowhead was, you know, making more and more sites. So, you know, some of the original people had to move to covering the other projects. But I really liked Wow, so yeah. I stuck with that. And then in MOP, I took on more of like a, a leadership role, sort of overseeing how we would do our launch coverage how we cover our guides how we needed to keep updating the site to be uh, relevant over the years it seems like blizzard will occasionally link to some of the things that mm -hmm. wowhead has done um how has that when did that really start when did blizzard sort of notice wowhead and start linking to a lot of what you had when i was doing more in mist they still had the fan site program you know going then so i would try to reach out and be like hey you know i'm doing this cool holiday guide you maybe want to link it or like is there something you guys would really like us to do uh, you know i'll go to these press events to see what's coming up next you know we'll do interviews and uh they started linking to some more guides for a while as a result of that nice and do you feel you still have that same level of engagement today are they still linking yeah i mean they do i mean it's yeah. changed over the years like obviously in cataclysm uh twitch wasn't really a thing back right. then so uh you know blizzard now they have a there's only so much pie that they can uh, share around so you know like some of the slices of the pie go to you know, uh, streaming a lot of it, um, or Discord channels or YouTube. But I think, you know, I think they've, they've treated Wowhead well. I still get to go to press events. Yeah. I still get interviews. I still get, you know, cool merchandise I get to send. So it's a pretty good relationship. So when did Wowhead start doing a BlizzCon party? Uh, I think that was actually the year uh, I went the first time. I was not involved in the first sure. party because I didn't even know I was going. Right. Um, but yeah, we've been doing it. I think this is like our either our ninth or tenth party we've yeah. done. We've you know we didn't uh, skip any year except for that one time when they skipped BlizzCon. And, and now um, you're partnered up with another group. Yeah. So uh, when we started, there were so many little community parties, mm -hmm. uh, and then. You know, things changed, like the Hilton started charging more, uh, the place we used to have our party is actually bulldozed, and it's now becoming a luxury mm. resort, <laughs> and just the dynamic has changed, you know, Twitch starts doing parties, Discord starts doing parties, everyone wants to do their own party, and we just figured, you know, let's just partner with the only other, you know, community party that does stuff on that night, and let's just be the community resource, so, yeah. you know, let's not compete with a multi-million dollar company that's going to do a gigantic, you know, nightclub, you know, song and light show. Let's right. just do our own community meetup and work together so people don't think we're trying to compete. So the first BlizzCon you went to was what year? Uh, whenever they announced Miss. I think that was 2011? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Right. Have you been to everyone since then? Yeah. Okay, so how, have, how has BlizzCon changed over the last eight years? So it's interesting because when I started with, you know, when I started playing, like I was playing every day, I was leading raids, mm -hmm. I wasn't going to BlizzCon, like I couldn't really afford it, but it was always like this far of thing that, oh, you know, other people go to right. BlizzCon, but, you know, I remember... When I got the Cataclysm virtual ticket, it was like, oh my god, I'm splurging. Like, ooh, this is so much for me. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to BlizzCon. And then it's like, oh, you get press badge. And it was, it's sort of like very overwhelming. It was like, oh my god, you know, like, yeah. what's going on? Um, but, I mean, it has changed. I mean, obviously, WoW was the focus. And now certain years, obviously, WoW is not the focus of sure. it. But... I think it has changed for the better. There's still like a good community focus with it. You know, more games always means that there's less pressure on WoW to bring the hype, especially if there's not an expansion. Right. I like how they've really expanded the merchandise line over the years, mm -hmm. um, how they have like the cool plushies you can get, the cool pins you can get, mm -hmm. um, how they've expanded the hall to have more coverage. Um, I think those are only, you know, positive things and yeah. how they, with more space, they can do things like the voice actor panels or music panels or things that aren't just, you know, marquee headlines, but that the hardcore fans will really appreciate. I've been a big fan of the whole art displays that they have there. Yeah, I love how they have the museum area and then the auction uh, area that is some yeah. of the really uh, awesome pieces of art on display. Yeah. So do you think they're going to run out of space in that convention center at some point? Uh, Seems like they're filling up the whole thing now. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's, it's interesting how it's expanded to be like 2.5 days now, how the yeah. day before it's the Dark Moon Portal Pass. Right. Because, uh, you know, everyone's like, oh my god, it's two days, how do you fit all this in? Mm -hmm. And now they have the, you know, preview day where you get to buy the merchandise. So, yeah. 
I don't know, maybe they'll just have a few days of like fluffy things to do and then they'll flip things over and use that same space yes. for other stuff. But I don't know. I mean, I think they recently had the annex uh, expanded in the Anaheim Convention mm-hmm. Center. So uh, they got some space uh, there, at least. So shifting subjects a little bit, one of the things that I've been sort of exploring is the toxicity in part of the community. Yeah. <laughs> um, it almost seems like Wowhead, and I could be wrong about this, but it almost seems like Wowhead has been more or less immune to that. Um, I don't know. It's like It doesn't seem like there's a lot of toxicity in the comments and things. on different Well, I, I really appreciate that because uh, <laughs> so we try... you work hard at that? Yeah, we, we work really hard at that. Like, we always try to promote lots of different people so it doesn't seem like we're playing favorites right. um we try to make it seem i like the idea that it's in like an ensemble cast at wowhead so like mm-hmm. i like writing about lore and specializing in one thing someone else is like the raid expert on the team mm-hmm. someone else you know is the community liaison someone else uh, handles classes like i don't want it to feel like you know there's one person and then that right. personality hinges on you liking wowhead or not and we do have a team of really dedicated mods that are always in the comments that are like, hey, you know, let's just keep things calm. Right. You know, we try to present things in very neutral ways. Uh, we do have an opinion series, but we try to make sure the language is still respectful, even if we disagree. Um, and yeah, we, we really don't want drama. Like, that's not how right. WoWhead has been successful. Want, you know, like the point of WoWhead is to read the comments. So we don't want you to read a news article and then you get scared off by the comments and you're like, oh my God, like, what am I meant to do? It's interesting you say that because most of the information I get from Wowhead isn't going out of my way to read articles other than maybe like a Fat Boss article or something like that. Um, But it's, I'll look up an item and then I'll read the comments because there's usually almost more information in the comments sometimes. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the way of browsing has changed over the years. Like, items are really good for things like Classic and 8.2. Mm-hmm. But then if you're really into the data mining, you're going to be, you know, refreshing that page whenever there's a PTR build. Right. And uh, that's really, you know, picked up in the last few years especially. Yeah. So, you know, you want to make sure that there's no fighting in the comments about Sylvanas burning the world free or not. You just want it to be, you know, just respectful in general. And we've tried to increase that presence, you know, with our party and our, you know, Twitter, on our social media, on our Discord. We just want it to be a place where you know you can just have fun playing wow like i didn't have the most conventional background and i found wow a welcoming community so i want to preserve that for people a lot of the content creators out there are focusing on like a particular niche Mm -hmm. it seems like somehow wowhead has been successful at being all things to all people yeah (laughs) is that sort of an intentional like effort that you guys have made or or is that just kind of happened by accident um, it's something that we've thought about, uh, especially when I took over and Blizzard started doing things, you know, like the Encounter Journal putting it in game or, you know, like more and more stuff Blizzard has put in game that were basic things on WoWhead. So we decided, you know, if we want to compete and still be a place people want to use, we have to make sure we have really high quality content. But if we just cover one topic, then how does this justify maintaining a database for all these topics? Right. So I tried to work hard along with my, you know, coworkers to find people that were really passionate about specific things and have them kind of own that section on Wowhead and have that grow. So it's interesting that you you do a lot of your own content creation. How many how many overall contributors would you say on average are contributing to Wowhead in like a three month period? And then how many of those are actually on staff at Wowhead? So we have a dev team of four or so developers. And then we have a few people that are on staff that help with content, like our community uh, content um, feedback manager uh, is full time, but also works on other sites. And my kind of assistant that helps with a lot of the community guide wrangling is also staff. Uh, We then have a lot of freelancers that spend a lot of their freelance time on WoW, maybe like five or so pretty dedicated people, you know, like one guy likes raids, you know, two of them focus on classes, Uh, someone else um, focuses on like, you know, secrets and transmog, stuff like that. So we've got this core group and then we have an insane amount of freelancers that specialize in one thing. So, you know, we've got a detailed freelancer for every class. Yeah. And not just BFA, but classic. Right. And then we've got, you know, Fat Boss writing all the raid guides. We've got, yeah, we've got several dozen freelancers yeah. that we sort of have to manage on a daily basis. It's like herding cats. Yeah. And, <laughs> but, but you've managed somehow to be all things to all people. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We try. So that's, that's pretty impressive, I would say. So it seems like you're managing a pretty large team there. Yeah. And it feels like the way to go, like, you know, we were just talking about it um, before we started filming mm-hmm. how, like... With the trends in media, a lot of sites will cover, you know, dozens of games yeah. and then they'll focus on WoW for one week and it's very like very superficial. Mm-hmm. And maybe that approach works if you're casual, but we don't want to do that on WoWhead. We want to stick yeah. to our quality and have really in-depth courage, you know, right. coverage that the fans want. We don't want to just go the general media route just because that's what's popular. 
So we've tried to really like dig in our heels and just right. do what we think is the best coverage. So in terms of engaging with Blizzard, yeah. um, it's a long time ago they had a fan site program. Um, yeah. it, they haven't had that in a long time, <laughs> um, but they're still engaging with some fan sites. Uh, do you feel like that level of engagement has been about the same since you started at WoWhead? Do you feel like it's gone down a little bit? Uh, I mean, like? it's definitely been ups and downs, especially yeah. as you mentioned, like there's no more fan site program. Right. I remember I was part of a fan site meetup in Mop that was pretty cool. Yeah. And then in Warlords, they had a bunch of jumbled stuff going on, but it felt good, but different because the movie studio reached out to me to have WoWhead do something on the red carpet. So it felt like, oh, you know, WoWhead's still getting this cool thing. I don't know when the program ended. No one really sent me, you know, like a... It wasn't I don't really know. announced. Yeah, but it, I noticed that things were changing. You know, a lot of people left the company. Um, and then, of course, with the recent, um, you know, uh, layoffs uh, as well. Um, they've, you know, it has been a bit disorganized yeah. recently. Yeah. Um, I just, I always just try to reach out, you know, it's like, I'd rather, uh, you know, apologize than, you know, uh, not, what, what's, what's the phrase again? It's like better to ask for like forgiveness than permission. permission. So yeah. it's, it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, Hey Blizzard, I'm doing this for 8.2. You want to highlight it? Like, yeah. Hey, we had a record traffic. You should yeah. know about this. So I just always, you know, try to, you know, kind of be pushy and let Makes them sense. know what's going on and, you know, stay respectful. And if they want to talk to me, cool. If not, you know, Wowhead is, so, so yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, traffic has been steadily increasing for the last eight years. I mean, it's it is it's at up and downs. Yeah. Um, we've been noticing that uh, we have more time on page than before mm -hmm. because of trying to enrich, you know, things like the item pages or the guide pages, which we didn't really have, you know, several years ago. Um, remember when BFA came out? Um, Alexa, you know, they do comparative rankings, and we were outranking a lot of porn sites, <laughs> which is really <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah, it was like, you know, top 100 uh, Alexa. We were beating at like, you know, UPS, like Washington Post, like yeah. all these really big sites because everyone just was spending their whole day yeah. uh, reading Wowhead. Um, we've awesome. also noticed the traffic uh, shifting on the site, you know, like in Cataclysm, everyone was like, oh my God, new quest, what do I do? Like this old zone has changed, but yeah. that dies out. And as Blizzard keeps adding components of Wowhead into the game, we have to do other things. So we've noticed that the news has gotten p pretty robust in the last mm -hmm. few years with the data mining, as well as the guide section as well for things like, you know, the class guides, because if the talent calc is on Blizzard now, right. then you need to, you know, still make people look at the site. So it's just kind of this nice triangle of the database uh, news and guides yeah. that's doing well. You tend to see spikes with new patches. Yeah, it was really cool. I was really proud when we like passed a million uh, page views for BlizzCon <laughs> one year, and then we started doing that more regularly in the news section whenever there was yeah. a new PTR build. That was really cool. Nice. What are some of the other fan sites you like that are out there right now? Uh, I really like Raider.io. Yeah. Um, they used to be, I think, WoW Jitsu back in the day, mm -hmm. the old progression website. And they recently came back and they were doing a lot of really cool things with Mythic Plus and rating. And they're always really good about reaching out to sites like WoWhead and saying, hey, here's this cool little widget we made based on data that you can put yeah. in your guide. So, you know, thanks for the tooltips. You know, you, you get something in return. Yeah. Um, we take so many requests for tooltips from community sites like, oh, can you add this in a certain color? Can you show this formula for our site? That it's really nice when that site then thinks of a cool way for us to present our data. Nice. Um, Warcraft Logs is another um, cool one, yeah. site, like very, you know, advanced, um, you know, sort of like change the game. I mean, there's always combat log sites, really but they just made it uh, so much more uh, precise. Um, and they have things at like the problems panel or seeing, you know, top essences. Um, and then another site is Raidbots, which kind of took the idea of simming as some kind of very scary thing and mm -hmm. they've made it very polished and pretty and super easy uh, to use for gear uh, updates and I think they've really you know changed how people look at gear uh, yeah. in the last few years. What are some of the new features you guys are working on at Wowhead that aren't out yet? Oh so one thing is uh, you know Wow Classic uh, yeah. that that's you know kind of out there but there are some features we'll still we are still uh, working on for example we're working on a gear planner yeah. and you can put all your gear in uh, and see what the stats are at any level, so it's also good for twinks. And, you know, we're trying to show all possible stats and then also add in talent integration. So if you have a talent that adds, you know, 5% crit, yeah. um, you want to see that on your character sheet. Yeah. Or if there's talent with hit, it's like you want that character to know that because you have extra hit from talents, your, your gear has, you know, less hit on it, for example, to reach that cap. So that that's one thing we're working on. Um, we're also doing a front page revamp because we have to do that every few years. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I remember what Wahoo just used to be a search box. Yeah. And then we're like, no, it's going to have actual stuff on it. And I was like, <gasps> and uh, then we actually revamped it again a few years ago to be more sleek. And this time we're trying to uh, 
you know, just make it look a little more modern for 2019, especially because we've got super old school Wowhead now on the classic mm -hmm. Wowhead site. So if you want the super old school look, you can use that version yeah. and then we'll have the more modern version. Um, so, you know, people that are new to WoW aren't like, oh my God, what's this weird blast from the past? <laughs> so earlier we talked a little bit about how uh, WoWhead's engagement with Blizzard has sort of gone up and down over the years. Um, mm -hmm. And you've added some new features. Sometimes Blizzard's come and done some of those. So in, in your kind of mindset, how has WoWhead sort of evolved to change as Blizzard has changed, as the game has changed dramatically? So WoW has started off as this database. Uh, you know, you wanted to find your best in slot, you used the Wowhead filter, you found the item, you didn't know where something was, there was the comment. And that was pretty good for Burning Crusade and Wrath. The original team made a really amazing database and added really cool features like the filters and the model viewer. And then when I joined in Cataclysm, they wanted to do more with news. And, you know, obviously news would have been really big to have if, you know, like, oh, look, Cataclysm is being revamped, let's have this news section. And I can see why they wanted to do news. And it needed to go through a few uh, revamps, you know, trial and error, and we kept making the new section better, and then Blizzard started hyping up data mining more. So we had to keep promoting that even more, and then it's like, okay, well, the, dev the developers have to focus on data mining things faster and faster and making the models look even better, and we need to then analyze the coverage. So our news has really taken off, and we kept we keep trying to add to it. So I think even though I've been... Working on news since my time in Cataclysm, I've only been really happy with the news section maybe in the last three years. Okay. So, and of yeah. course, you guys have started doing a Twitch show. Yeah. So, you know, Twitch was obviously something that was not around when WoW and, uh, you know, WoW had started. But it's such an important part of the community. So we've tried to feature different Twitch streamers on our front page. I do a show, WoWhead Weekly, where we uh, recap, you know, obviously things in the last week. And then the cat stops by. Mm -hmm. And we also know that... Uh, you know, uh, Twitch is great exposure for Wowhead. So now that we have a front page, which we never used to have, we can highlight little blurbs about what's, you know, hot in the day. And we know a lot of streamers really enjoy, you know, opening up uh, Wowhead and saying, okay, what what's new on Wowhead? Let's open up an article. Let's react to it. And that's just so good for the site because it has community engagement. You know, we look friendly to the streamer and their community. And then people are inspired to actually check it out on Wowhead and, you know, look at the features they can't, uh, just get from, you know, looking at the streamer's computer. Another thing we've added uh, in Warlords, which I think really uh, changed the site that was really good, was uh, Warlords had, you know, the garrisons. And for better or worse, there were unique things in the garrison up each day, like the inn, you know, is the innkeeper up? Uh, is there a certain daily quest that's up? You know, what's the invasion boss? And we started tracking all these things on Wowhead, and we called it Today in Drainer. And people really, we were, we always were struggling to have the front page get more traction so we would be known beyond more search box and by putting this feature on the front page suddenly people were going to the front page to learn well what can I do right now in WoW right. and no one else could show that because they didn't have all the massive amounts of data uploads that WoW had did and we've kept expanding that in Legion and now BFA and people love going to that part of the front page which then has in turn you know gotten more eyeballs on news so then we keep you know doing more creative things with the news and it's this really nice synergy if i remember correctly if i go to the front page right now like and i can immediately go look at the current tier of raid content yeah if i remember right uh do you currently have the current affixes up there for mythic plus? yeah so we have like the mythic plus we yeah. have uh the islands you can run we have the emissaries that are up uh we have like the pet battles you can one run so you know when squirts in town mm -hmm. it's really obvious that you can get the extra xp um we have the blue tracker on the front page we had a blue tracker for years and, you know, analytics were like, hey, no one's clicking on this. Let's put it on the front page. And I was like, oh, you finally made this. And I'm like, no, we always had it. We just didn't <laughs> present it well. So, you know, a lot of trial and error and analytics to, you know, maybe there's a feature that people didn't really care about a few years ago, but now they really strongly care about it. So we yeah. keep uh, changing stuff up. Um, makes sense. Yeah. Another cool thing we did is the Discord webhook. Uh, another, you know. Uh, with the rise of Twitch, every streamer, every community has a Discord. Uh, classes have their own Discords. And we made this uh, webhook where whenever we post news and you subscribe to Wowhead, you have this alert just sort of pop up in your server. And uh, things that were never really uh, high traffic on Wowhead, like hot fixes or data mine spell changes, there's suddenly all the rage through Discord. We can track that. And how many people are in the Discord right now? Um, so some servers have over 100,000 people subscribed, and yeah. we're installed in over 15,000 servers. Nice. So, wow. you know, whenever we post something class-related, you can just see thousands of people clicking on that That's link awesome. at once. So it's just like, it's sort of like this direct feed, and, you know, maybe a mainstream site would just, you know, rely on, like, Facebook or Twitter, which we have as well, but... 
we really want to service that hardcore WoW community, and Discord. it's such a you know cool fit with Discord. So currently, you're doing WoWhead articles. Have you ever yeah. considered like offering that to other types of fan sites and things, like when they're putting things? So the uh, the the company that owns WoWhead has. Um, different fan sites with different approaches, including right. one site that covers a bunch of different <laughs> games. You, you know, I've actually written some articles on Pokemon, which I really like uh, as well. Or uh, one time they did like an Easter week called Egg Week, and I advised with that, and then I did a silly egg-themed article on Wowhead. So I try to apply the lessons I've learned, you know, project management or design skills to yeah. other sites in the network. Did Wowhead ever have an IRC? Before I was there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we did have an IRC. Yeah, and so did that stay around till Discord came along? Or yeah, I active? was never really active in it, but yeah. yeah, it was yeah one of the old school things. Yeah, so I think it went the way of my of my uh, live journal community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Discord has replaced a lot. We yeah. Really have uh, nobody's using Vent anymore or Mumble or anything like that. Yeah, either. I'm pretty active on Twitter as well. I don't yeah. know if you were playing in that period, but for like a hot minute in Warlords, all the WoW developers would go on Twitter and post mm -hmm. updates on what they were working on. Like the guy making pets would post pictures of the corgi, and the guy doing classes would talk about his day. So yeah. I got pretty involved in Twitter then, and I would try to ask them questions or I do these tweet roundups because it was really fun but chaotic to read everything because oh, yeah. you'd be like i have to read 20 twitter feeds yeah and yeah that talking about you know things that ebb and flow we made this uh, developer tweet tracker that tracked all their tweets and we did daily roundups and then blizzard changed their approach and they all stopped tweeting <laughs> so you know traffic declined to that part but then we made you know something else that was more popular yeah. so we just have to keep our you know pulse on trends and adjust accordingly so you've been directing wowhead for some time now yeah you think that's what you're going to be doing for the foreseeable future yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I always I want to keep trying new things, but Wowhead is a good framework where it's stable, so you have like a cushion to fall back on, and then yeah. I can focus on improving different parts of the site and learn new skills that way. So you know, when we do design revamps, I learn a lot about design, or doing a Twitch show, I learn about Twitch. So it's a good framework where I can take risks, yeah. but you know, the core of the site will always sort of be there untouched and you know, going strong, and I can learn different things along the way. I think that's all the time we have. So thanks yeah. for joining us, and uh, we'll see you around. Yeah. Awesome.